Morning. How are you all? You're happy to be here? <laughs> okay. Um, I trust you guys have been having an interesting early week. So, last week we talked about we talked about, um, what did you talk, talk about last week? What was the second step? What was the second step of lecture? Learn. Yes. Yes, we learn. So have you been learning? Yes, you have been. So have I. I have learned that that I'm a lot older, yeah, and you know I've learned that we get really tired and we get really uh, stressed, but I also learned that we need to deal with it. So there you go. So if you if you're feeling uh, really stressed and uh, really uh, tired from last night or from your assignments, let me encourage you to relax and be yourself this morning. If you need to sleep, then you can sleep. But if, really? That's too dangerous to say, is it? Okay. So, last week we talked about learning and we, we covered a number of things um, in that topic. We showed you some examples about analogies, metaphors, representations. So, yes. We are always dealing with things that represent um, situations, experiences. So your experiences have a specific representation. You yourself can be a representation. What your knowledge, your knowledge can have a sense of representation. So what we learned last week is about that, representing your experiences. Okay. I'm not too sure what happened here. All right, I'm just going to move on. Can you see me? All right, that should do. Now the lecture capture have to have to capture me. So, okay. So, so today we're going to deal with observation. So, third step in the step of creative thinking. The first step was asking the right questions, where generating many questions on the fly, on the go, spontaneously, or intentionally generating questions would provoke your mind to come up with different alternative, uh, different kinds of solutions. You may have worked on the egg equipment, you know, um, you may have come up with different models, different, different contraptions, but when you generate more questions critically, like why, how, when you become the critique, you keep generating those questions because being the critique is so important. In a whole group of people who are coming up with solutions, one of them has to be a critique. Without, without the critique, critique, you will not refine the idea. Ideas need to be refined. Yeah? Now, then we went to learn because learning, we need to find representations. We need to find knowledge. We need to find more data. And just like your egg contraptions, as you fly, as you launch, as you glide your eggs, the materials that you use and all that require specific knowledge. And with knowledge comes more uh, observation as well. So it's like an endless cycle. So you, you have to continue to observe how it works. Now, observation is done in many different areas, in many different ways. The important thing of the whole thing about observation is that you can't take anything for granted. You cannot take anything for granted. Look at the person beside you and notice them very, very closely. Can you do that? Can you see each other? You can, right? Yeah. You should see, you see the person beside you. If you're not looking at the person beside you, please do. Turn to your right. Yes, good. Turn to your right. That's right. Now, yeah, look at each other. 
Guys, if there's a girl beside you, look at her. Girls, if there's a guy beside you, look at him. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. It's bringing a smile to your face. Yeah? Fantastic. So, now look. We, we human beings, we tend to take each other for granted. And because, because we always have things in our mind. But the most important thing is you have to rely on your sight. When you're, take, when you're observing, you're just not just look, looking with your eyes. You've got to look with your senses as well. Yeah? So don't take nothing for granted. You've got to be really aware. You've got to be really aware of who is the person beside you, who you're working with. Be aware of their abilities. From the last assignment, you have been working with your groups for the first time, right? And you have got to know them to some extent. You have discovered things about them that you never discovered before. Maybe you socialize with them really well, but when you work with them, it's a whole new level. <laughs> All of a sudden, you said, hey, please work, please work. All of a sudden, you say, oh my gosh, this guy can't draw. Why is he in our group? <laughs> oh, oh man, he stinks. You know? And all of a sudden, you also realize, um, you know, when it comes to socializing, they're always on the dot. When it comes to meeting up for a group, they're never there. So you get to know traits, characteristics of individuals. But, each, but that does not diminish the value of the individual. Do not be confused with that. Just because a person has inabilities and weaknesses, it does not mean that the value of that person has gone down. It only means that they need to discover themselves more. And how do you do that? It's through each other. The, the dreamer, the critic, and the realist, the goal of that Remember the three circles, and if you subset the three circles together, you have common ground. Your job is to find a common ground, something that will make all of you work together well. You, good teamwork is the key to success. And by doing so, do not take anything for granted. Do not be, you have to be more aware. Sometimes you can be annoying. Yeah? Sometimes you have to be annoying to the person, but only for the job, to get the job done. Then once the job is done, you can socialize and like catch up. But when it comes to working, get the work done. So sometimes you need to kick each other's butts, right? That's how it is. Leonardo da Vinci never took anything for granted. Leonardo da Vinci really was meticulous. He looked at every single thing. Even if the things uh, didn't really fulfill his own expectations, there was something about the thing that really made sense. Even, even something that we ourselves take for granted, like mushrooms, moss, little scratches on the wall, those things are less, or just, what has that got to do with anything? You know, that's the kind of attitude we have. But when it comes to Leonardo da Vinci, he does not. You know how I know? Because I talked to him and I, told, I asked him all these things. Do you believe me? No, okay, good. So you're awake, all right. Good observation. <laughs> so Leonardo da Vinci observed, his power of observation was so acute that he's learned to create scale. He knows uh, scale. Uh, it, have you heard of Leonardo, uh, Leonardo Fibonacci? Yeah? I'll show you in a short video. Now, Fibonacci has observed uh, scale in nature, which I'll show you the video uh, afterwards. Now, the world of the visual is very interesting. Subliminal information is everywhere. Yeah? And I hear some giggles and... No, that's just two bottles of... That's two bottles. What, what do you think they are? Who? I have no imagination. No, it's I have. It's perfectly fine. I mean, it's two bottles, right? Yeah. And that one is uh, Burger King, right? 
It's about a burger, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to move on. So observation is everywhere. There are information hidden in everything. Yes, I'm aware of that. Yeah. You got to look for new patterns. You got to be intentional in this thing. When you want to observe a specific thing, you cannot observe. Sometimes it comes naturally, spontaneous, but most of the time it has to be intentional. Sometimes you like, like you saw the picture of the two bottles, the difference between that and something that you see in nature. Um, you can see that nat nature or things that are around you are naturally formed and you can actually intentionally try to see or you are exploring the possibility of finding uh, the, the pattern. Now, for those who are in the field of visual arts or architecture or, and, or any, basically any discipline, there are a specific sense of observation when you go out to the urban area. Now, in the urban scape environment, you can find all these kind of differences. In nature, you can see repetitive elements, for example, things that repeat itself. If you take your, your smartphones with your camera, with your all these, you know, your smart cameras, you, you'll be able to find these differences everywhere and repetitive patterns, fractals, everywhere, even on your skin. Yeah? So it's hard to take anything for granted if you are really intentional, if you really want to see up close what is it, what makes it all up, what constructs things. That's why when you generate questions about observation, what kind of questions would you generate? What, 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 are, the item, what are the elements that make up you? What are the elements that make up the building? What are the elements that makes up this possibility? In philosophy, you can ask the, the fundamental question is, what am I made of? You know, uh, the question, the fundamental question is of why the sky is blue and things like that. Questions that provoke you to find out the different things that's contained inside that whole big picture. That relies on really, really intentional observation. So they are everywhere. You can find these things all around you. And to cultivate your senses is one of the things that will make your observation more sensitive. Like I said, observing is not only through your natural eye. It has to be through your senses. Can you observe through your touch? You can, right? You can. Do you want to demonstrate how that works? I think you already know that. Now, what else can you observe? You can observe through smell, taste, right? And so on. Now, tactile observation, tactile senses, like touching, is crucial. Is there any human being in this world that cannot touch, or cannot feel anything? Are there? Yeah, those who are paralyzed, right? Like those who are really paralyzed, they cannot, they have lost every sense of touch. There are individuals, uh, unfortunate individuals who have lost, who are totally impaired. Their, their sense of touch, their nerve, their nerve, something damaged and they couldn't feel. Some of them couldn't even smell which is really sad. So, but what about people who can touch? So for those who cannot touch, cannot smell, they will probably tell you this, please don't take this for granted. Appreciate everything, everything. Yeah? Have you ever been to exhibitions with installation art like this? You should. Have you, have you gone to um, the Petronas Science exhibitions? Yeah, you should. I shouldn't ask you these questions. Yeah, you, you, could, you could go and they have experiments there. They have experiments with touch, color, light. It would be really fun. But this is very common for, for um, people in the architectural designers, basically. Very popular among designers. Designers like to experiment with sensors. Um, they create things like sensory deprivation chambers, or 
They sort of deprive one of your senses to experiment the use of materials, things like that. Like, uh, what if you what if you just go into a space where you can't hear anything? Everything relies on touching. Have you ever been to the, the black restaurant, the Noir restaurant in KL, the one that 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 does totally black? Like, you eat in the dark, dine in the dark. There, there you go. Anyone experienced that? It's it's pretty pricey to go in and eat. I think you. I'm not sure how much you need to pay, but when you go inside there and eat, you are guided by a blind person. The waiters are blind, and and they will guide you to the table. And of course, when you eat, you can't even see the food you eat. Would it matter to see the food you eat? Really? <laughs> hmm. Why? What if there's a fly? Don't, don't you trust the cooks? Don't you trust the waiter? Yeah, what if the waiter does this? Uh, <laughs> uh, here you go. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's gross. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. It would be a big risk. But what about, what about uh, another way of observing? observing? Uh, a common way to observe is to spot differences. Like, we are in a really diverse, multicultural society in this country. I think a lot of countries are quite diverse in their ethnicity and, and cultures. And especially our country, we have been, been like this for, for many, many years. And if you were to celebrate our National Day, this upcoming National Day, this is worth celebrating. Diversity. We're not going to celebrate the GST, but the diversity. <laughs> so anyway, Spot, spotting differences in cultures is important because we are with different cultures. How many cultures are here in this, in this class? Can you, can you look around and tell me? Can someone give me an approximate answer number? Look around. Look to your left, look to your right. How many people, how many different ethnic groups do you find in this class? Five? Eight, seven, you're counting down or what? Um, so you have a number here. And how many of you not too sure what ethnic group you're from? How many of you are from mixed mix parentage? Give me a show of hand. And what 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 uh, what is your main yeah yeah you're Chinese but mostly more to the Chinese but you but you don't look Chinese but mostly more to Chinese oh my God I don't know <laughs> is your is your dad Chinese your mom Chinese. Your, your dad is what? Your dad is... Oh, gosh. <laughs> your dad is half Chinese. Your mom? Your mom's Indian. Oh, your mom is Indian and Chinese. So it's Chindian. That's a very common term, isn't it? And a little bit of Malay. So Chinese, Indian, Malay. Uh, how do you call that? Chin what? Chin Malay. Chin Chine. Chinale. Chinale. <laughs> oh my gosh. So is it is it mainly these three ethnic group in your family? In your bloodline? Interesting. But what do you say more Chinese? Do you speak Cantonese, Mandarin? Your sisters, but you don't. So what would you call yourself? Would you call yourself Chinese, Malay, Indian? What would you call yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> She's not Bangladeshi. she? Okay, thank you. Who, uh, what's your name, by the way? Shantini? <laughs> Shantini. What? Shanli. 
Shazlin. Close. Close. Okay, anyone else? Uh, anyone else from mixed parentage? Who? What's your name? Jurgen. Jurgen. J U R G E J U J U E R G E N. Sounds like a German name. Jurgen. Yeah, Jurgen. Yeah, Jurgen. That's a German way of pronouncing it. Jurgen. So, anyway, what, from what, what's your dad? Your dad is? He's Sinhalese. Sinhalese, that means uh, descended from Sri Lanka. Okay, and your mom? Chindian as well. Yeah, Chinese and... So, are you confused about who you are? You're not? You are everything. Wow. Whoa. Interesting. You said, I'm everything. Yeah? So, anyone from other countries here? Anyone from another country? From an Hey! Yeah, and what's your name? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Alice Wonderland? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. Alice. Alice Wonder. Alice Wansa. Very nice name. Alice Wansa. What does Wansa mean, Alice? And what tribe are you from? What, what group? What ethnicity in your country? And what's, what about you? You're what? Can someone help me? Can't hear you. Songa. Songa. Musonga, I see. And Musonga is in, you're based in which African nation? Which country? Uganda, I see. Well, wow, that's amazing. She's from Uganda. It's not very often we have... Uh, it's not very often we have someone from uh, Uganda. Most of uh, the people I know are from Nigeria and from Ghana. I've got a really good friend from Ghana. I've got a relative who is Nigerian, relative, through marriage, yeah. And I see another person from Africa. Yes, and what's your name? Please shout. <laughs> I'm sorry? Okay. I'm... I don't want to pronounce your name really wrong. N K U N B U M Kumbu. Do you have to pronounce the N or is the N is silent? Nkumbu. Correct? Nkumbu. Ah, nice to meet you. And what background ethnic group are you from? You're from, you're also a Musonga tribe? You're Tonga. And Tonga is in which country? Zambia. Amazing. Wow. So you have somebody from Zambia, we have someone from Uganda. How interesting. Nice to meet you, Nkumbu. And what about uh, anyone from another country, Middle Eastern country? Uh, yeah. How many Middle Easterns here? Yeah, don't worry. I'm not Russell Peter. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, what, what's what's your name? Shash. Shahin. Amil. Amal. Amal. Amal Shahin. Amal Shahin. You're from Iran. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. A lot of middle listeners I know are from Iran, so I'm sorry. I, yeah, where are you from? I see your ancestry, ancestry is from Saudi Arabia, Mecca, and you grew up in, you were born in Ethiopia, in Jeddah, but you lived in Ethiopia. Oh, you're, I'm sorry. 
Pakistan. I'm sorry. So, but now you're in Pakistan. No, 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 no your family is in Ethiopia. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm a bit slow. <laughs> so what? Oh, you're from Pakistan. Yeah. You were born in Jeddah. But what about Ethiopia? Do you see? Uh, okay, never mind then. Okay, but you're, you're, you're from Pakistan. Okay, very good. Nice to meet you. Anyone else want to share? Who else? And who you, where are you from? You look, you look very Malaysian. <laughs> but you're from Brunei. Uh -huh. We get many Brunei students nowadays. So, so um, are you Malay or are you mixed parentage? Yeah, Malay. Is life in Brunei any different from life in Malaysia? It's quite similar. It's more simpler as well. Yeah, I get the drift. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Isn't that interesting? Now, whenever I ask students about where they are from, uh, just like what Amel shared as well, and Sometimes they are from different places because their parents travel a lot and you tend to follow your family and all that. So, spotting everyone differences in cultures is not just the differences in color. It's also the differences in background, it's the differences in your location, your ancestry. Now, and it, the world is coming to a point where you can't really tell where you're really from because you're so mixed. And we are somehow converging. The world is not just becoming smaller in technology. It's also becoming smaller in terms of connection, in terms of relationship to each other. There will come a point where we will definitely realize, maybe we already do, that we are very much similar to each other despite the differences. But unfortunately, there are people who want to still divide. But nevertheless, how important is it to preserve to preserve the, um, the outlook, the appearance of your culture. There's, there's of course religion, but can just like the, uh, the dreamer, the critique and the realist, if you put these this circles together, you know, can you form a common ground? So can, is it possible to be uh, musical notes in, in a bar where every note has a different tone? just like every religion, just like every different ethnic groups. Is it possible to do that? Yes. Okay. And cultural differences are so valuable and so, so interesting. Um, the, there are cultures that paint their bodies, that, that really like to do that. There are cultures that, that like to adorn themselves with all kinds of jewelry, and adorning themselves have uh, become so much part of their, their culture that, that is, a, is observable ritual. You know, rituals, be, rituals are something that has evolved over time. Um, sometimes cultural cultures have fashion, you know, not just body adornment, not just, you know, these are some of the little things, the few things that you can observe about a culture. And sometimes observation can also be accidental. Like I said, spontaneous, some spontaneity in observation, is, it does happen. It can be quite um, like, you know, you can discover it by accident. You, and it's called serendipity. Ex serendipity talks about spontaneous accidental discoveries. You can actually discover things by accident. For example, if you look at products like conflicts, something like conflicts has been discovered accidentally. You know, um, he actually burnt the, 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 the corn, the corn thing, okay? It was burnt, but it so happened that it tasted really, really good and it, it responded really well to people. So they decided to mass produce it Velcro was also discovered by accident. You know Velcro, right? Yeah, these are some of the products that have been discovered accidentally and it proved to be so useful. Even the astronauts use it. 
Another way to observe things is by switching perspectives. Um, switching perspectives. Can you see things from, from the eyes of another? Is it possible to see things from another point of view? Do you want to hear a little short story? Yeah? Okay. Once upon a time, <laughs> there's this beautiful, beautiful tree. And this tree, okay, is so beautiful that it, it loves itself, you know. One fine day, a little squirrel came hopping by. And this squirrel saw this beautiful, beautiful tree, right? And, and uh, when this squirrel saw this tree, and he said, Hello, Mr. Tree. And the tree said, Hello, squirrel. Um, can I come and make a home in you? Because I'm, I want to find a place to make a nest. You have a very beautiful trunk. I like it. And the tree said, Um... um um, I don't know. And the squirrel said, Oh, don't worry. If I make a nest in you, you'll be more healthier. I can prune your leaves. I can, you know, pluck the fruits. And, you know, I can probably help you pollinate the flowers and whatever, you know. You know. And then the tree said, um, uh, You know what? No. I like it. I like myself as it is. You know, you don't have to come and make a home in me. Um, don't, don't. Go find another tree. Yeah, but you know, winter is coming. You know, uh, you know, things are going to get bad. I need to, I need to have a home. And then the tree said, "No, it's all right. You know, it's okay. I don't need you. I, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I don't, I don't need you. That's sort of thing. Just go find another tree." Then the squirrel said, oh, "Okay, very well." Then he went to the next tree. So when he went to the next tree, the other tree said, "Oh, hello, little squirrel." And the squirrel said, "Why?" I, I, I want to uh, find a place to make a nest. Can I make a nest in your tree? And, the, and this tree said, yes, come on. Come up, hop up. You can always borrow a hole in, in me <laughs> and live in me. No problem. Oh, I, you won't regret this. You're going to be very, very healthy. So the squirrel made a nest in this tree. And the tree was healthy. The tree didn't die. Squirrels make nests in trees all the time. So, but this tree was very healthy because he had the squirrel and everything, you know. Time passes. And after some time, the, there's a few guys down there, loggers with chainsaws and everything. They're walking around and they're looking for trees to chop, to, you know, to cut. And then they saw this beautiful tree. And they saw this beautiful tree and they saw, they saw, oh, let's, let's chop this tree down. And then, then, uh, so all of a sudden, the squirrel came out from his nest. And then the loggers stopped. They said, hey, look, that's a rare squirrel. That's endangered. No, no, we cannot chop this tree down. It's a habitat. Let's just leave this tree alone. Um, how about that tree there? That's, that's another beautiful one there. That's got a very strong trunk. And then they went to that tree. And then when that tree saw those loggers coming its way, the tree was panicking. Oh, no. Um, um, a squirrel. Can you please come out from your tree? Um, then the squirrel came out. Hey, uh, you know what? Come and make a nest in me. You know, uh, no problem. You can always stay as long as you want. But the squirrel said, Yeah, but I wanted to. Then you didn't want me. You know, you rejected me. So now I'm making a nest in this tree. It's kind of too late. I'm sorry. I can't help you there. So then, what happened to this tree? What do you think happened to this tree? Gone. This tree was slashed. So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that if <laughs> don't what's the moral of the story? You gotta help each other. And if you wanna help each other, you gotta see each other from different point of view. So if you see from the the squirrel's point of view. It's important. It's very important. So this, then you understand what the squirrel want. And sometimes we are like the squirrel. You know? Seeing from different points of view is very important. You must learn to see things from different perspectives. Another, another way to, to enhance your observation is to travel and explore. Wherever you go,
take your idea journal with you. You all have your idea journals. You have your little papers or folders or little clips uh, of uh, A4 papers or whichever that you have that's convenient to you. Bring those things along. But even if you don't have them, if you're socializing with your friends at Old Town, whichever, take a little tissue paper when you get an idea or observe something, write it down. Or if you have a smartphone, sketch it in your smartphone. If you have a stylus, you have an iPad with a stylus, sketch there. Do whatever it takes to get data and to observe things. You, your life as in the foundation level has changed because you are now becoming more you know, sensitive to what's around you. So traveling is important. Having the journey with a friend is also very important. If you do travel, go with somebody. Nobody is a loner here. Some of you like to travel alone. Some of you like to do things by yourself. But if, if you're so comfortable doing things by yourself, then something must be very wrong. Maybe you, you should try to try to get, build a rapport, build a strong connection with somebody else. Even if the connection is not that strong now, but try to develop it. Find a common ground. See, the, see it from their point of view. Have a habit of doing things like that. Do you like gaming? Do you know what game this is from? Oh my gosh, who said that? Oh my gosh, you're a fan. Yeah, I know. Um, I like Skyrim. I, I like things like that. Like there's a whole world to look at. You know what's so interesting about this game? When, when, when you, when I, I don't, <laughs> if you, you can travel physically, but this game is so big that you can travel in there too. And when you travel in there, you can observe things that you'd never thought you could observe. And sometimes the creators of such a virtual environment, you know, they, they never expect things to happen at random or they maybe expected some random situations to happen in there because they only program something there and then they're, they're, they just expect things to happen. So when things happen, some funny things do happen, you know. Um, so uh, do you watch movies? Yes, you can watch fantasy movies or whichever, but what do you observe in movies and how now, when you watch movies, what is the biggest, where, where do you find the biggest impact when you watch movies? When do you find the biggest impact? Let's say you watch uh, a horror movie like, um, uh, what's, the, what's the ghost movie, Paranormal Activity or something? Uh, whichever. But what is the biggest impact? You know, when I watch a movie by N. Night Shyamalan, uh, The Sixth Sense, you remember watching The Sixth Sense? I don't know whether you watched it before. But after watching that movie, right at the end, and after watching the end, I was like... Wait, what happened? And when the lights came on, I was still like that. I just wasted almost two hours thinking that the guy was alive. You know, the, I mean, like, you know, something like something like that. So, so I walked out. I walked out to the cinema, like, oh man, you know, what, uh, you know. So, the impact is always towards the end. Why is that? Because your what are you observing when you're watching in this movie? What what are you immersed in? You're immersed in your senses. So it's not just the sight. It's the emotion surrounding it. Is it possible that your reaction towards something that's happening is also worth observing? observing, observing? Now, playing with toys. Do you play with toys? What toys do you play with? Transformers. <laughs> okay, I can hear that uh, from her tone of voice, he's a collector. And anyone else play with toys? Guys, what toys do you play with? I know. You still play with Nerf. Any Nerf players here? They're shy to admit. Hey, I play. I play with my kids. Now, well, what about paintball? Do you play paintball? That's a sport. That's not exactly a toy. But do you play with remote controls, cars, remote control airplanes, remote control toys? Guys, you don't play? 
Uh, never mind, we'll deal with that next week. Yeah? Lego? You like Lego, right? Have you tried this? Yeah, you would love something like that. You like this? Playing is important, guys. You have to play. Yeah? So, so when you play, what do you observe? Your reaction. Right? You observe your emotion. How else do you know what toy you like if, you do not, if you're not aware of how it makes you feel? Right? This is a really good game. Yeah? Find peculiar shapes. Right? If you look at the stars at night, do you see constellations, for example? Where can you find shapes? If you look at... Uh, why are you laughing? It's, it's just coral. No, but this is not meant at you. <laughs> but you see, this is naturally formed. What if it's naturally formed? It's not intentional. Don't complain because of this. Huh? <laughs> it's a natural image. Not my fault. But where, do, where else can you find peculiar shapes? You know? You know, uh, researchers and archaeologists excavated this gold ornament from, um, from an Aztec pyramid. And this is uh, more than 2,000 years old. And at that time, there was no airplanes. And apparently, when they, they were so fascinated to how it looked like, it looked exactly, I mean, look at the detail on this gold ornament. It looks so much like an airplane, but this is prehistoric. And... And um, they were so curious whether, whether these people actually knew what they were making that they actually created a model of this thing for real. For real. Scale, just large scale version of this. Exactly the same. And they put, um, they put a, uh, a motorized propeller in the front and, uh, and, and a remote control sensor, something like that. And they, and they tried to fly it. You know what? It was aerodynamically sound. It actually flew. So that gave birth to so many questions as to how, why this existed then. Um, if, you, if you watch those uh, ancient alien documentaries, you'll be shocked. <laughs> Look for bad examples. Another way to observe is, some of you like to look at faults. You know, we are always on a fault-finding mission and there's no problem, but do it in the right context. Bad examples of visuals, you know. Uh, you can see little accidental or mistakes, you know, in construction. You can also see um, problems. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes they intentionally make it like that, you know. Yeah. You'll <laughs> and sometimes uh, in, in, um, even in the living room, sometimes you... Now, this, this is very subjective because some of you like it like this. But to me, this looks claustrophobic. It doesn't look spacious. Does it look spacious to you? Yeah, I mean, to me, it doesn't look. I mean, to some people, they like it like this. But it's way... There's too much overcrowding here. Um, and sometimes... Bad examples can be good examples. I mean, bad images. So it's not pleasant to see an image of a person uh, doing that. But that's exactly how you react when you see somebody, you know, in front of you, right? Yeah, you're like, you. And then you'll be observing, where is he going to put that? Where are you going to put that? Are you going to flick it there? Are you going to, uh, la, 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 la. Um, you know, where, where, you know, so that's why they put this this photograph here. You know, so it's not cool to pick your nose openly. So that that, so when people see the photograph, they're grossed out. Rather than they rather see the photograph than the real person do it. So in a way, it's a bad image, but for a good purpose. So like I said, if you see from different points of view, uh, you 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 look at the right context. I think you can find, you know, that this. Is um, observation is crucial in finding solutions. The end of the slide. <laughs> That's it. No, I don't have a clap. <laughs>
I know it's really hot, but uh, we, we, about, we just ended now. So before we end, there are a couple of announcements. I think Miss um, Delia is going to be here to, to talk to you about your e-portfolio. And uh, about tutorials, tutorials will start at 11. And for tutorials, what we would want you to do is turn up for class. But, but the thing is, we will discuss in your tutorials session what you need to do then. Uh, it won't be long tutorials today, just for today. We may not have uh, much activity, but we will need to do some discussion. So to, to, today's tutorials is just discussion in preparation for next week's uh, brief as well. So you're going to do maybe one or two exercises, maybe one take-home exercise. But these exercises are not given points. However, these exercises are important for you to show. The result of this exercise is important for you to show in the following class. Now, what, what I meant by that is, have you heard of a social experiment? Have you heard of a social experiment? You heard, right? Um, let's find a social experiment on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Let's just say, like looking for reactions, uh, things like that. What? Like, uh, give me an example of a social experiment you saw. Anyone has any? Yes? Oh, Fuzzy Tube. Homeless uh, man. How do you find this? Homeless man prank? No, it's not a prank, right? This, oh, this one. There you go. I'm legit nervous right now. Yo, sir, sir. I just want to be a helping hand today. God bless. What? God bless, I'm just trying to help out. I don't need your money, you asshole. I can f***ing buy you. In today's society, it's socially acceptable for the wealthy to give money to the homeless. Is it acceptable because it's one individual helping another? Or because one individual is better than the other, so it's okay to help? Today I want to flip the script and see what happens. Sir? I don't have any money, man. No, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't need your money. I'm trying to give you money. How do you need your money, man? No, nah, I'm just trying to help out today. Here you go. Does it look like I need your money? Get out of here. Wait, wait, sir. Sir. What? I'm just trying to help you out today. I don't need help. Make this off, man. I know you're in a rush. Oh, I don't have any cash. No, no, no. I'm not trying to ask for cash. I'm trying to give you cash. No, keep it. Look, need it. I'm broke as it is, and the only way for me to feel rich in this world is by giving what I can. So here you go. No, don't do that. Get yourself breakfast. I want to lend a helping hand. You know what? I, I have a few dollars. Why don't you take more and make me feel rich for the day? Thank you. Have a good day. Go get breakfast. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? I want to give this back to you, but I want to thank you so much for that. You're on camera right now, and I just want to thank you. Um, I'm not trying to see who would give me your money or who would not, but I'm just showing that the only thing we have in this world is to give to others. So thank you so much for that kind of... God bless. Bless you. Oh, I don't have any money, though. Okay, well, here. Here, buy yourself something nice today. Are you trying to be funny? I wish I could help you out, bro. I got some water or something. How about I help you out today? Looks like you need it, so. You want to give me money, man? Yeah. You prick. Oh, You're going to take my money, then call me a prick? Sir. Sir.
like my sign says, no one has ever gone poor by giving, and I have all that I need in life, so I want to give back. God bless. Hey, look all you have, and you want to give to me? Yeah. God bless. Are you sure? Yeah. Have, have a good day. What? I have all I need, too, so whatever. I'll give you. You're going to give me that? Yeah, all that, man. Just because it's good message, man. It's so positive. Thank you, man. Should I offer to pay his meter? Sir, 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 before you pay your meter. Oh, no, I'm good, man. Thank you. No, but look what my sign says. No one has ever gone poor from giving, and I just want to give back to you. Oh, okay. Well, let me give you something. You see that? That's a Benz. You got to earn your way up, pal. That was the most pretentious thing I've heard today, and I've been doing this all day. Thank you. C-Class, baby. C-Class. Nice, bro. Yo, but how much money you got in your heart? Sounds like you're pretty broke. It's a black car. Okay. It's a black car. Okay, that's nice, bro. I'm good, homie. That's nice. Good. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It matters how humble you are in your heart. And you're not really humble saying all that. This is LA, baby. All right, have a good one, bro. Keep Keep walking. Keep walking. <laughs> Christian, keep recording this bullshit. What's up? Keep walking. Keep walking. What's up? Keep walking. What's yeah. Up? That's a C class. Oh, that's so nice, bro. How much did you pay for that? About $50,000. Oh, you got money, bro. Congratulations. Dude, I you do. need to humble yourself, man. Life isn't about money, bro. I'm not even freaking homeless. I don't care what kind of car you drive. I don't care if you have a black card. Dog, just keep moving. Honestly, you don't want any of this. Just keep walking. All have right. a good day. All right? All right? I remember you. Oh, remember me, bro. Remember Listen, you're not going to do shit to me, so just keep walking. Says who? Just keep walking, bro. Says who? Have a good day. All right. Have a good day. Keep that 10 bucks. Have a good day, bro. Have a good day. Ruin my whole freaking mood. We're done with this video. Let's go. Yeah, so... So I think uh, it'd be good for you to watch some social experiment, and we'll discuss that further during tutorials. All right, so thank you very much. Um, oh, yeah, hold on. Hold on, don't move first. Okay, just want to know uh, how how um, Nor Ifa, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Miss Ifa. Okay, Miss Ifa is not here today. So who is which which uh, students are under Miss Ifa's class? Show of hands. How many of you in total? Can you give me a number? How many of you? What? Twenty? Twenty-five? 20 plus. Okay, so you train the, this group of 20, you need to bunk into one of our classes. Uh, uh, 20 plus, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll, I'd, yeah. Okay, can I can take 10. So I, I'll take 10, 10 refugees from uh, Miss Ifa's class and another uh, 10 or so you can yeah, maybe you can. Few of you can uh, go into uh, Miss D, Miss D's class. Yeah, but what about Sufina's group? Together. E six. Okay. Okay. Then uh, you can you can bunk into my class, but in case there's not enough chairs, but you you can just sit anywhere. You know, on each other, so no problem. Um. Um. Where, what is, where is, where is uh, my class? Where is my class? But well, what's the venue for tutorial? E311? Yeah. So I will see 
you guys in E311. So Miss Ifa's group, you can bunk into my class. If some of you want to bunk into Miss D's class, you can. Um, and Miss Sofina's class, you can. And Miss Sofina's class can bunk into. But Miss Sofina will be here, right? Yeah, you can bunk into Miss Sofina's class. Miss Sofina will be in class afterwards. Okay. Uh, any questions? Okay. I'll see you. Oh, hold on, hold on. Now, Miss D is going to explain to you about the e-portfolio. It's a it's a very quick one. Okay. Okay, sorry, I have to use this brief for now. Um, for all my students, they already know that they have to do an e-portfolio for all the subject. For the FIA and FID, you will need to do an e-portfolio for CTS. All right. So this CTS is uh, for the e sorry e-portfolio is ten percent individual work. Um, you are required to actually set up like an e-portfolio. Um, sorry, like a blog or website to actually. Um, include your the e-portfolio assignment will concentrate on the reflection of what the student have learned from the assignment project presentation and maybe activities so this is what you should put in in your e-portfolio student will need to upload their assignments or projects and to include critical and intellectual reflection of what they have learned from that particular assignment presentation or activities so for now you're supposed to actually put in your um, the first project, the, the, your flying egg, right? This is part of the Taylor's Graduate Capabilities Initiative. Each student must submit and pass the e-portfolio component to pass this module. So it's a 10%. Um, so your, each student is required to recreate an e-portfolio. Students are required to scan and upload their work before submitting their work. Um, before the submission, so you, you have to uh, scan it. The students are required to write their reflection on what they have learned from that particular assignment, project, tutorial session, presentation, or activities. So they are encouraged to research on how to produce a good reflection. E-portfolio as the reflection should be original and ha have some critical thinking. So the, the submission will be at... Um, students are required to submit their e-portfolio link at the end of week 10. So by the end of week 10, you should have set, set up all this... Um, web page or, e uh, or website eh? and again as a final submission at week 18 what what I will do is I will actually create an online form so you will fill up and then you will submit that link understand okay students are required to upload scan documents of their work blah 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 here okay now name this name here you, I will change it later I think that you have to put a different name I will, uh, I will discuss this with um, Mr. Charles. Maybe you have to put CTS and uh, the, the intake and your name. Okay? I'll come back with this, the name of your blog. Alright? So this is how we will look at your, uh, at the, how we will assess your e-portfolio. We look at quality, originality and depth of critical, uh, and critical of content, reflection and information provided. That's 50%. Fulfill the requirements such as to include all assignment and information. So if you have like, there's 10 assignment, I want to see 10, 10 things there. If you don't have 10, you have 5, then you know this will be reduced. Okay. Clear, easy and creative composition. Layout of the information and easy to navigate. Alright. So I understand properly what you put in. That is all 100% which is a 10%. Okay. That's the e-portfolio. Any question? So for now, you just, just uh, create it and upload your stuff there. Okay?